Investment advisory firm Morningstar believes the Australian equity market is undervalued, but corporate profit growth could slow in the second half of this year, particularly in sectors that rely on household spending. ASX-listed companies are being forced to deal with soft economic growth, increased costs and rising interest rates, which could cause subdued market conditions. Joining me now is Peter Warns, Morningstar's Head of Equities Research. Peter, thanks for your time today. How challenging is this second half of the year going to be, especially with household consumption stalling? Yeah, well, Ed, um, it is going to be a task uh, that everyone's going to, uh, you know, face. Um, the consumer sentiment and, uh, and consumer spending is going to be under a lot of pressure and momentum is building as we move into this second half. Um, the retail figures up until June 30 weren't too bad, but I think you're going to see if some horrible numbers come out um, in the next six months and you could actually see retail sales actually uh, you know, declining um, it, at the aggregate level. What's your tip for interest rates? Are you expecting more rate increases this year, which will obviously add further to that reduction in consumer spending? Well, Ed, the Reserve Bank is in a difficult position. There's no doubt about that because they've pushed now to 4.1%. Most economists are saying another couple of uh, rises, but on the doorstep is the first tranche of the repayment of the term funding facility uh, of $63-$64 billion for the big four banks. That's going to put a squeeze on liquidity and I just don't know whether if you're squeezing liquidity whilst you're also raising rates, if you want a recession, that, that, that's, the, that's the recipe for it. So I'm not saying they won't move again, but be cognizant of the fact that liquidity is being pulled out of this, uh, this system um, and uh, by the 30th of September, those four banks have got to stump up, as I said, $65 billion. So pretty tough-looking economic outlook, potential for a recession then over the next six months or so. But Morningstar, you guys still believe the Aussie market is a bit undervalued. So I guess there's some potential here uh, for investors as well. Oh, well, there's always potential. I mean, you know, our fair values are based on the mid-cycle um, and, you know, it tries to take out the short-term noise. And um, you are, it's going to be a very noisy environment over the next six to nine months. And so we've got to try to strip out that uh, and look a little further out. And so, yes, there will be opportunities um, for investors over the next six to nine months. I expect uh, the worst of the market uh, to be behind us by the first quarter of next year um, as the markets start looking forward. But, you know, the way I'm, I'm you know, toting it up is that we probably will get a recession in both um, consumer spending and in GDP on per capita terms somewhere between now and the first quarter of 2024. All right, let's talk about some of the big asset classes that make up a lot of the ASX. Start with the mining sector. What's your outlook looking like for them? I know in your pack you show commodity prices are still historically at pretty high levels. Well, they are, but they're well off their peak. I mean, you look at, you know, look at, look at iron ore. It had a two in front of it 18 months ago. You look at thermal coal and you look at metallurgical coal. Copper was over $4.00. So, so whilst they're still elevated from a historical point of view, the, the, the rolling uh, uh, comparatives are going to suggest to you that the, the, the revenue growth is going to come out of the miners after having an absolute picnic for the last two or three years. Um, and, and of course, costs are, are on the way up. Um, they're in deeply now embedded right across the, uh, the economy. Um, th basically through wages and other input costs. So you're going to get margin squeeze and uh, the, the, uh, the earnings will be still quite, str quite strong uh, in terms of, again, historical numbers, but they'll be down substantially from the, uh, the previous year and that's across resources and, um, and energy. Just shifting to retailers, supermarket chains specifically, they've obviously put their prices up quite a bit 
over the last 12 months have benefited from that and from inflation. But are they now starting to... Are prices now starting to finally come down? Well, I mean, Ed, prices, prices will move around a little bit. But Pete, what we've got to understand is that even if inflation starts to pull back, and it is, and, and, and it will continue to do that, I suspect, since in, in, the inflation genie got out of the bottle, prices are up 20 to 25% across the board. They are not going to come back. And so there's a new level of pricing that all households have to understand and have to deal with, that, that, that they've got to reset their, their spending to an elevated price level. And the, and the wages and growth is, hasn't, is not up 20 to 25% over the last 18 months. And so is there going to be a catch-up? So the households are going to be running hard to try to catch what the prices have already... the price increases that have already been in place. And as I said, they're not going to come back because wages are continuing to go up and that's going to be deeply embedded right across the cost operations of all companies out there. And so prices aren't going to come back. Peter Warns, Head of Equities Research at Morningstar, thanks for coming on the program today. Thanks very much, Ed.